Hey, what is up, guys? It's your boy Dinkbot003 back at it again with another video. Uh, we got a little bit of One Piece for you guys now. Um, I've been playing One Piece now for a while. Um, I completely quit Yu Gi Oh! Um, just uh, had some stuff going on, and then I ended up finding this game and just really fell in love with it just because I love the anime. Um, and so our locals this month decided to do a little bit of a fun tournament where everybody got to spin a wheel and whatever leader we got, uh, that's what we had to play. Um, and we banned Sakazuki, Enel, and Purple Luffy just to kind of get the top three decks out of there. Um, so nobody would really be playing a meta deck. Um, and yeah, so, uh, uh, I'll give you guys kind of the field of uh, the tournament. It was a uh, one king, um, one starter deck Kaido, uh, one Arlong, one queen, um, one Luchi, a iceberg, a Bello Betty, and then me playing the starter deck kid. Um, I think the starter deck Kaido ended up winning it all. Uh, shout out to Jimmy. He is the T.O. he barely ever plays. Uh, I think he's never played a tournament, actually, besides the starter deck battle uh, that I've been involved in. And, uh, yeah, he played for the first time today in a long time, and he ended up winning. So, uh, congrats to him. Um, unfortunately, we didn't end up taking it all. I thought we had a really spicy deck, and we would have been able to take it. But it is what it is. I, I still think the deck performed really, really good. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna stop boring you guys just so you can get the deck profile and then, uh, we will go over the replays after this. So I played, uh, four baby five searchers. Um, you don't really play a lot of bodies in this deck. Um, but sometimes you can just kind of depending the matchup. Um, but since I do play a lot of Don Quixote cards, uh, just kind of when I go first, I like to just drop this if I have it. Even if I'm not going to use it the next turn and I just go 5-5 five, five with the leader, I still just kind of have it there as an option. Um, or sometimes I can just go uh, drop this going first. And then uh, in my next turn, I use the ability search. Uh, usually I'm just adding like a 2K or something or an event. And then uh, I swing 7 with leader just to make sure it hits. Um, but yeah, she's, she's just kind of there just to search. Search 2Ks and events and occasionally search some uh, other bodies. Um, yeah. And then next I played the X-Drake 4. Um, he's just removal. He's a 6 body. Um, sometimes when you've been putting that pressure on with the leader. And then um, you're able to drop this because they're going to be swinging at you. And you, you, know, you can defend your life for the most part because you don't really care about using your cards in hand early. Just because you're always going to be swinging and then you can just clear a body with this. And that helps you just keep going at their leader. Um, and then I played two of probably my favorite card in the game. Uh, two five cost Yamato. She is a double attack banish. Um, so I was able to drop her once in the tournament. You guys are going to see. Um, this kind of just there. Um, just like sometimes on my 8 Dawn turn I can get cards out of hand or like if i drop this and it sticks i just put all my dawn on her just to get hella cards out of the opponent's hand um and then i just swing five with this and usually the five goes through if they gave me like three or four cards to stop this from hitting because like if this hits it's it's super devastating um double attack banish is, is just too insane um and also she's a 1k counter then i played two eight drop kid um, he's just really good. Um, sometimes in late game, uh, you, you're able to drop him and then put like a blocker on board just to kind of protect your life when you get low. Um, just, it, it's just there as like a backup plan. Um, and then, uh, if he sticks on board, you're able to swing nine with him and then just, uh, swing nine. Yeah, I think like nine with this and then nine with your leader and then you activate and you can swing again. And I believe you have two Dawn left for your Punk Gibson. 
So you go three 9K swings, and then you have a Punk Gibson, which is pretty good. Um, and then I just played some Dofi. Uh, for the most part, he's just discard fodder. But if you're able to stick these on board, it's just really crazy. Um, and you just burn cards out with hand with this. And then, like, once you have, like, two of them, um, you're able to just go uh, swing leader uh, with most of your Don. And then swing that twice. And then you can put the uh, Dofis into them, um, which is pretty good. But, yeah, for the most part, he's just discard fodder. Like, a lot of these bodies are just discard fodder just for your leader ability. But they're there just, like, in case you need it. It's, it's kind of like a, a toolbox deck. Um, just has like the tools that you need to play a real deck um because you can like play a real deck with all these cards and just like you don't care if you go like a turn or two where your leader ability doesn't go off um and then i played two um rosanon or four two drop rosanante blockers just because i can bring it out with the uh kid um and he's just a cheap blocker so like I can use leader ability and just drop one of these two just to kind of play it safe. Uh, same thing with the killer. Uh, like when you're at 10 Don, you can use this, drop the killer, uh, put a Don on each of them. So it's it's really good. Um, and then some more blockers. Uh, Law, he's just also really, really good. Um, and like let's say you have like a baby five on board that you didn't really use. You can put that back in hand. And get more counter in your hand and you have a blocker um and then i played for a 12 2 k's um this is pretty self-explanatory you just you need 2 k's um ezo uh is like really good too because it can rest a four cost blocker uh for three and then you can attack nine twice with your leader so that's pretty good excuse me um and then i played four punk gibson um it's just insane it has a really good trigger it can rest any of your opponent's card um so it's almost like a beige um and it's only two costs so and it also rests the body so it's just really good um and then i played four of the op5 event the zero cost which also has a really good trigger it rests a five cost um yeah uh, okay no it rests a four cost um but that's still pretty good it helps stop you from taking life and also like you can pitch any of your big bodies um or law like anything that doesn't have a counter it just turns the the card with no counter into a 1k and this into a 2k so that's really good and then i also played um four paradise uh, it's just uh, a really good event to uh, the trigger isn't really too crazy um, but I mean it, it comes up sometimes but like not very often I don't think it came up today at all uh, for the most part you just care that it's a one cost event that rests a four character so you're able to rest blockers so you can go into life twice um, so yeah that's really good uh, and yeah guys um, I, I really like the deck. I think it performed really well. It's really balanced. And, I mean, you can play without even dropping any bodies sometimes. And just kind of playing defensively with your events and stuff. And, like, maybe you drop a blocker or two. And, you know, if you need to actually play, like, a real deck and play, like, a slower game, then you have, like, the toolbox that you need down here at the bottom to, like, play as well. So, I, I think it's a really good all-around deck. Um... I mean, it, I did play in a spin-a-wheel tournament that nobody was really playing meta, but uh, I I would not feel bad about playing this in regular locals. I, I think you could get away with playing this at locals and winning um, if you play it well. But yeah, let's get into the replays, guys. All right, let's do this. Uh, this is round one, and we're paired up against my man Tristan. Um, we had a really, really good close game. Um, he is playing queen. He got really, really lucky in the wheel. Uh, I think he probably has like the best leader here. Um, he probably should have won the tournament. Uh, but yeah, he decides to mulligan there. Show me his hand. It's really, really bad. Uh, I decided to mulligan too. 
Yeah, so this this match is a really close match. Uh, a lot of back and forth for sure. Um, this like a really good display of the deck as well. So I won the die roll. I decided to go first. Um, just in case if I don't have like a baby five I want to drop or something. I'll be able to go five life twice. I um, mean, get cards out of hand or just hit them for two life, uh, which is always good. So, yep, we just grabbed the Dawn and passed turn. We did not get the baby five, which is fine. Um, he's going to drop Kaya, draw two, and he's going to trash, yep, uh, two 3,000 worlds, which is useless versus my deck, uh, for the most part, because I'm barely ever going to be dropping bodies. Um, so here we go, five, and I believe he counters out, which I get super happy about. Um, I know Queen wants to have a low hand size, but like. You know, when when you're going in your first swing and you swing twice and your opponent counters both, it it just feels really good getting two cards out of hand. Uh, especially when you're hitting, like, an X-Drake right there, like, which is a, a really good card for Queen. Um, just getting that gone early is really good. Um, and I believe here he gives me a 2K, so giving me a 2K for the 5K swing I'm not really tripping about. Um, and I discarded my own X-Drake. Um, I just kind of got rid of it just because I don't really need it early game. Um, it's very situational versus queen because most of the time they just keep their stuff active because they're blockers and all the stuff that gets rested are just his big body attackers, which I mean, X Drake is never going to be able to deal with those. Um, and he goes six here. So that's an easy 2k there for me, um, which I believe I'm going to do here. Uh, just because I kind of want to preserve my life um, as best as I can in the beginning. Um, yep, so I give him a 2K. And then he goes Dofi here. It looks like he hit two, three 2Ks at Yamato. Um, yeah, so next turn, uh, I think we just do the same thing again. Um, and kind of try to get rid of that Dofi blocker. Looks like he has a Burley, a Yamato, and something else in hand. So, Burley, Yamato, and maybe a Beige in the hand. Um, and I believe he's going to put the cards on top as well. Okay, yep, so he puts it on top and passes. Uh, so we draw here. We're going to ramp our Dawn. And, yep, I think it's just uh, rinse, wash, repeat. So we go five lead again. Uh, just hoping to either get cards out of hand or hit for five. We don't really want to invest on this early into the swings. Um, and I believe I have a Punk Gibson, so... Yeah, I'm probably just going to go five twice, leave two down up, and uh, try to punk Gibson that Dofi, um, just so I can clear that, or maybe drop an X Drake on it if I have one. Uh, I don't really remember too well. Okay, so we got eight again. Yeah, so a 2K and a 1K, which is fine. And, uh, yeah, this, this turn frame is kind of wacky, but I understand because he has, um, the read on the Punk Gibson. So he puts one Dawn under the Dofi because he knows it, it'll get rested if he doesn't swing it. Um, so I take that, um, and then he goes five again. I think I counter out of this one because I'm like, okay, I just take this, counter out of this. He drops like an X Drake blocker on me or something. 
Um, but he gets crazy, and he goes five with Takaya. Uh, and I was not expecting this at all. I think I'm going to take this just because I don't want to give him any more cards. Yep, so I take that. I didn't want to use the Punk Gibson on that because I'll get, like, zero value out of it. Um, and now we are at seven dawn, I believe. So, I think I go for board here. Um, I think I did have the X Drake. Yeah, so I'm going to go like five into the Kaya. Um, just because I don't want to go for life right now because he'll probably take them now. Um, and if he hits a couple of triggers, then that's when it starts looking really bad for me. So, yeah, I kind of just want to clear board here and set up to where I can swing three times. Um, that way, if he does have like a trigger. I can still get him low in life. So he's up to 8 Don here. Um, so he's not going to be doing queen abilities yet. Um, and yep, we're still telegraphing that Punk Gibson for him. So he's, he thinks this for a bit because he's really trying to play around that Punk Gibson. Because um, like I said, I, I really telegraphed that and showed that I had a Punk Gibson. Now two turns in a row. Um, so he's really scared on dropping a body before swinging. Yeah, and it looks like he just has two Ks. In hand in that Yamato we saw earlier. So he's, yeah, he's just thinking he can't drop the Yamato. Um, he could, like, drop a Kaya just to cycle more cards and fix his hand up. Um, but, yeah, it looks like he has two Kayas. Uh, so he ends up just uh, going 13 at life. And, like, if I counter out of that, I'm giving him a lot of cards that... I'm just like whatever. I'll just I'll take that cuz I know next turn he's probably going to drop a big body um so he can get like a draw or get a heal. So, I'll be able to counter out of whatever swing he does as long as he does drop a big body next turn. So, yep, I go 6 first just try to fish a 2k out. And then we go 5 Yep, like I said, we know he's going to drop a big body. Um, so it looks like I'm probably going to go for the 8 cost kid here. Um, just because, like, yeah, he he's going to use 8 to 9 Dawn. And that means he can go maximum 7, which is not enough to get rid of the kid. So then next turn I have 4 swings on him. So, yep, he's at 10 Dawn here. Let's see what he does. It looks like he has two Yamatos now. Yeah, he has two Yamatos and two Kayas in hand, uh, which is kind of wild. Yeah, so he's definitely just going to go Yamato. Uh, he's at three life. I'm at two, so he'll be able to KO my X Drake. Um, yep, that's what he's going for. KO the X Drake. And now he's at... Three in hand and three life. So he won't be able to heal with the queen. Uh, so he probably just passes here. Alright, so I accidentally put a uh, one of my dawns in the drop or the trash. Yep, grab that Don back real quick. Um, and I think we just go nine with the character. Um, yep, 
Yeah, so I think actually we go leader first, just in case he has a beige. Yeah, so I'm just debating how I want to do it here. Yeah, so I think it's nine swing with leader. Okay, so yeah, I just completely misplayed, of course. Uh, yeah, so nine leader, and then if he has a beige there, I'm cooked. So I think here he's thinking if he wants to trigger and get another body. I think that's a cracker maybe. Or a Satori. Yeah, so no trigger. Luckily, uh, we go nine. And yeah, we're going to go nine again and leave two down up for the Punk Gibson again. Hoping that he plays into it. Even though he probably won't. Okay, so he goes to 10 there. So we know the next swing is going to hit for sure now. Which, I mean, didn't really matter. I think I shouldn't have even try to swing. Because that's just giving him a free card. Because he can heal if he has Yamato again. But at the same time, if I don't actually, then he'll just get up to four life the uh, the next turn or no he'll get up to three life the next turn which wow actually he gets up to three life anyway so i have no idea why i even swung there i just gave him an extra card in hand that's nice yep so he goes yamato heal and now he has a free card in hand um, and I think he just puts a Don under the queen, swings into the kid just to heal again. Or, no, he's actually going to try to kill my kid. Nope. Nope. He just tries to heal. Yep. Heal. Will he do it here? Okay, so we're just separating some Dawn here. Um, we're still diamond handing that uh, Punk Gibson. Um, So let's see how I do it here. Um, I'm a little bit scared to pressure him. He's at three life, but if I don't pressure him, he just gets up to four life, which is like really annoying. Okay, so yeah, we just swing five lead. He has two cards in hand. Um, so, I mean, I guess we just put him to one card in hand if he counters. I think I have a 10 cost Dofi in the hand. Um, so I'm just kind of trying to mind game him here. Yep. Yeah, so I'm trying to make him think that I'm going to actually play 
like other cars. But nope, we're just gonna tend Dofi. Um freeze his leader just to stop him from healing one life. But of course he's just a better player and he has the uh Yamato in the hand. So he's gonna heal anyways. Uh I think here if he didn't have that Yamato to heal up, we would have been sitting pretty good. Um, but like like I said, this game is like a really, really close game, really good back and forth. Um, so he's going to go, he's going to do the same thing he did last turn. Um, instead of trying to kill the kid, he's just going to swing 10 and get a card out of hand. And then he's going to heal life up. Yep, and at this point, I'm like, I'm never going to use this Punk Gibson, so I'll just get rid of it here. Um, So here, I, I really have to push for game here, because he only has like three cards in hand. Um, And it's like, it's coming down really close to where like, if I don't kill, he can kill. So I think I go nine liter, nine... 8 drop kid, 10, and then I have 2 Don left, um, but I, I kind of made a misplay, um, cause here when I go 9, I believe he goes up, okay, no, he takes it, and I go 9 there, instead of just going 8, um, because I had an Ezo in the hand, and like, if he hits a blocker off life, I just lose. So I should have kept that Dawn free right there just so I had three uh, to re-swing the leader and three to drop an Ezo in case he did hit a blocker. Uh, if he hits Beige, I mean, it is what it is. We lose, but he did trash two Beiges already. I should have just had the read. Like, he hasn't really gone through too many blockers. That has to be like a trigger blocker. And I just got to swing eight, use up cards in hand, because he's definitely going to give me two 2Ks there. And then he won't be able to stop the uh, 9K swing off the uh, leader. And then I can just swing the 10 for a game. So he's thinking here. I'm pretty sure he goes up to 10. Yeah, so he goes to 10. Um, so he would have gone up to 9, which would have been fine. Because then that would have left him with 2 cards in hand. And then I would have had the 3 Dawn for the Ezo here. Um, but you live and learn. Um, let's see here. Yep, I... I I think I swing the leader first. I'm thinking of swinging the Dofi. Yeah, I swing the Dofi. So I don't swing leader. And of course he is a Sanji right there. So yeah, I just, I needed to keep that Dawn off right there. And I had game here. And now I gave him a chance to be able to game me. And so he has five swings, potentially, and I can take three of them. Yeah, so I try. Okay, never mind. I just drop a blocker here. Yeah, so I drop a blocker. That way I can take four of his swings and possibly counter out of one of them. Um, but it, it works, but it doesn't work in the end. Um, I think I made the right play here. Uh, just dropping that blocker and trying to get another turn. Cause I can get past his blocker. Um, and like, yeah, he heals, but like I have possibility of drawing a rest or hitting a rest off life. 
Um, right here, I should have just let him, let him take the kid and kept the 2K. And then I could have given him a blocker and then he swings nine. And then I would have taken that. Yeah, so I should have taken, I should have let him get it and taken the next couple swings at life. Because then he would put me at zero, but I would have a possibility of getting something that rests the Sanji. And unfortunately, as you guys are going to see what he top deck for turn. Yep, he top decked that Sanji. So there's definitely no way that I have a game here. Because I only have three swings. I, I need a Paradise here to rest the Sanji. Which I do not have. Um... And later on, we see that I did have it in life. So, yeah, if I would have just let him put me at zero, I, I would have had game as well. Yep, so here, basically, the writing's on the wall. I'm just trying to see, like, if there's maybe a way that I can cheese the win. Uh, I'm going to probably swing the Dofi. Like, I know that if I swing life, it just gives him a card. So I'm going to swing first into a Yamato. That way he's forced to give me a body. And he can't counter out of that. And then I just go five life. A ten drop Dofi here would have been pretty good as well. Yeah, so I think he just takes that. Just takes that and goes to zero. There's no reason why he doesn't. Um, like I said, if I had a 10-drop Dofi here, I would have been chilling. I wouldn't have even swung at lead. Because I would have had four swings next turn. So even if he heals, well, he wouldn't be able to heal. Um, but I instead, I drew the A cost, which I drop right there. Um, and I can't pair it up with anything, so... It's just really a blocker, basically. Um, so the only things that keep me alive here is pr I, I need two Punk Gibsons in life. But I think I've already been through two or three. Yeah, so either a Punk Gibson or uh, the Zero Cost event. Can uh, both of those can rest so the zero cost can rest a Sanji and the other one can rest like a Yamato or something or I can rest the Sanji which I even think then even if those are punk Gibsons it's not uh, it's not game because he'll still have a swing. Yeah, because he has five. So, yep. Right, he's on the wall there. I kind of just tap it on just to bluff him. But, yep, that, that is game one there. And on to the next game. So, round two here. Uh, I'm playing against my brother. And he is on Arlong. Um, I actually help him build the deck too. Because, uh, you know, big bro got to help little bro out. Uh, and honestly, uh, he was super free. Uh, he super buns at the game and he really sucks. Uh, he literally has the best deck and he's just so bad. <laughs> but anyways, uh, so green and green yellow. Uh, Arlong is, he is playing like a really heavy yellow package. Um, I think I won the die roll and I go first cause I know he wants to go 
first. I want to go first, so of course I'm going to take that from him. And we didn't get the baby five, so we just get one Dawn and pass. Um, He did not get anything either, so yep. I think here I just go 5-5. Five, five. Um, it's just, it, it's the best play. It's basically a double attack, uh, turn one. So, I think here, we're just kind of talking a little bit about, uh, the tournament and stuff. Our last round. Um, uh, yeah, so I'm gonna go five. And I think he's going to give me a card here. Um, no, he takes it. And he triggers. Um, and here, I tell him, like, bro, like, why did why did you do that? Uh, there's literally nothing for you to rest. And that could have been a 1K counter you could have used right there. Um, but, you know, my butter is Bonds. So, it is what it is. I try to teach him better, but he just, he, he don't want to learn. He don't want to learn. But I'm going to show him. So he's thinking here, he's at four Dawn. Um, he probably just goes for the leader ability here. Yep, so he's going to swing eight. Use ability, drop the Peril Sparrow. Uh, I'm definitely going to take that. I'm not going to give him two cards on my first life. Um, I think he's sitting pretty decent. Like, he has the Leader Swing. He has a Peril Sparrow, which, like, if I remove, is a Searcher as well. Um, and he has a couple targets. I think he has, like, some 2Ks in there he can add. He has, like, Smoothie, uh, 8 cost uh, Katakuri, so... There's a couple of things there that I don't want to, like, rest it and get rid of it. Um, so we just keep going life. Um, so, yep, we're going to do that. We're going to discard a 2K, unfortunately. Um, just because, like, we have really good cards in hand. Um, so, yeah, we're just going to force another card. Just because, like, Arlong does not want to go that low fast. But, he, I mean, he's doing it anyway. Um, but he's not going to be able to heal anytime soon. So if I can get him really low, then it doesn't matter if he heals later on. So he's going to six Dawn right now. Let's see what he does here. Um, I'm kind of showing that I have the Punk Gibson. Um, but I don't think that he gets the read on it. Um, he's going to go two. Okay, he's going to boost there and go six life. And yeah, this just an uh, easy 2K there. And depending who he swings with, I can Punk Gibson here. I probably could have just punked Gibson there. Yeah, just because of this right here. Um, so, yeah, maybe it would have been good to punk Gibson out of the 6K and rest the Peril Sparrow, where now I got to give him a 2K. Okay, so I decided to take... Um, he has three, so he's going leader. He decides not to use the ability. Um, I know he's playing El Thor in that list. So, it probably is an Elthor. Um, yeah, so I just, I, I counter out. Uh, unfortunately, didn't use the Punk Gibson that turn. But I I know that in this matchup, I can, I'll get a chance to use it. Because if he does use Leaser, uh, if he does use the Leader ability um, when swinging 7, then I can just Punk Gibson, whatever he drops. So, I'm not really tripping about giving him cards here. Uh, so I'm going to go seven Paro and probably I'm going to go seven into the Fishman and leave two up for the Punk Gibson again. So 
So, yeah, here he's thinking if he wants to save it or not. But I think he lets it die to try to get the 8-drop Katakuri. Um, but looking back at it, I think it would have been better for him to just save it and force me to swing into it again. And then if he did hit the 8-drop Katakuri, he would have been able to put the Fish Man on top. Yeah, because I think he whiffs here. Yep, so he has nothing to be able to add there. So that was just a, a free removal there. And we're just going to get that out of the way because we know he's going to 8 and we don't want him to already have the category and be able to just put that back on life. Yeah, so here I'm telling him, like, maybe it, it would have been a better play to just save that. That way he could have kept the fish, man. So let's see what he does here. He's at eight done. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so he's going to 11 at life. He just really wants to do a damage. And then he's going to drop the Cracker. And he, again, leaves one down up. So at this point, I'm pretty sure he has an Elthor. So I kind of want to deal... I want to deal with the Cracker if I can. Um, just because he's... He's going to be pretty annoying. Um, but, okay, so I just go 5 life. And he uses that L Thor here, which I, I don't really agree was a good move. Um, if he had, like, any other type of counter, like, even a 2K here would have been better if he would have just given that to me. Um, but since he gave me the L Thor, I'm like, okay, I'm just going to swing again. Because if he's using L Thor to counter out, then he's got to be down bad in the hand. Yep, and he takes that five swing, um, and then I have six Don left there. And then I just pass. Okay, yeah, so this is the turn or the game where I had six of the Punk Gibsons. So, yeah, uh, if he would have had the read on the Pug Gibsons here, he goes attack, <coughs> excuse me, attack with the Cracker first. Let's see what he does. Yep, so he's going to go... Nine life with Cracker, double attack, just to try to put me at zero. Um, and I think I'm going to counter here, yep. I'm going to use a Punk Gibson, and I'll give him another card. So I'll go up to ten. I just I, I don't want to go to zero, because then if he has... I don't know, if he has like something, like a couple blockers, and I'm at zero, and he can just stop me from killing next turn, then I just die as well. Uh, he tried to swing five, but then he thought about it. Um, yeah, I think he had Rush Chanel in hand and accidentally put an extra Dawn under Cracker. Which, it, it would have been, like, really good if he did have, uh, if he would have just swung eight only. Even though I could just punt Gibson out of it. Um... Because, yeah, he, he would have been able to have that Anel on board as well. Yeah, I mean, this is what I was saying earlier against Arlong. Um, that if he uses the leader ability, you're able to just rest whatever he drops with the Punk Gibson. 
So I think here I might be going for game because he doesn't have that many cards in hand. Okay, so I'm just going to go 5 lead. I believe I have the 10 drop Dofi. Yep, forgot to ramp the Dawn. And, yeah, I think here, it's just, yeah, I think the writing's on the wall here for him. Yep, so he, yep, he draws the Yamato, though, so he's able to get back up to two life. Okay. So he just passes here. There's not really much he can do. Uh, I'm kind of thinking he has an Elthor in hand. Um, but, I mean, possibly not. And he could just be... Yeah. Uh, so let's see here. I think I might have another Dofi. I'm not 100% sure. Um, but we might just try to push game here. Even though it's a little risky pushing game in case he gets, like, a really good trigger off. Okay, so, yeah, we're just going to go five um, and see what he does. So, yeah, I think I definitely did have the uh, other 10-drop Dofi here. Okay, no, we're just going to go five again there. Okay, I think I know what the, yep. So, we go 10 on Pero. Uh, and then he's going to get his search off. And I believe I have the X Drake and another punk, punk Gibson in hand. Yeah, so I'm going to X Drake the Cracker. And then I have a Punk Gibson. So I think I think we're good right here. And he whiffs again off the Peril Sparrow. Alright, so I think we're good here. Yeah, I think we're good. Because even if he has the 7 drop in Nell, um, the Punk Gibson gets us out of that attack and we can go to 0. And then we're able to just swing 4 times at him next turn. So, let's see what he does here. Okay, yeah, he goes 7 life. Uh, he does not use leader ability. And I take that. Yeah, because... Yeah, I just take... Because if he doesn't have the Russian L, then we're sitting good. Um, he goes 8 life. And yeah, that, that gets the Punk Gibson out of the way. And now, if he goes 9 life, yep, I just take, and now I'm at 0, and I should be able to get game now, depending on what he has in life, uh, because he is pretty low on hand size, he only has 2 cards in hand. Okay, so we start by going 5 life to dwindle down the hand. I'm, I'm real scared about the um, him having like a beige or something in life. Especially after the round 1 where the last life was the Sanji and then he top deck, uh, uh, top deck a Sanji. Like, so I'm, I'm just really scared of the yellow cards right now. Okay, so I just play it safe. 
I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it goes six life. Yup, and since he has no cards in hand, we just drop another Dofi. Um, and then we have two active Dofis. And we got two in hand. I mean, if he top decks and Nell here, I probably lose because I think I don't have two two Ks in hand. Um, I don't even think I have a two K in general in hand. And he just passes. Um, he keeps a card in hand. Um, in case he hits a Sanji off life, or like if he hits a Namaru last life. So we go seven, cause I know he can't counter out of that. Um, I don't think he hits a trigger that does anything here. Okay, no, he did hit the beige. So now, now we're stressing. Um, so if he hits a blocker here, I just lose. So I go 10 life. And yeah, it's all all depends on that. And now that's just game. Yeah, so he had uh two two Ks. Yeah, so that that was a really close game there too. Really good one. Um now in the round three, uh we're playing against Bello Betty, uh playing against Jonah, our resident uh Kuro player. He's uh he's been going crazy with the Kuro though. He's been winning locals and I mean I we're pretty competitive at locals, so he he's a really good player. Um but yeah, he's playing Bello Betty. Um and we don't even roll, we come to a gentleman's agreement. He knows I wanna go first, he wants to go second, so we're like, Okay, I'll go first then. Um I decided to keep the hand and then he uh mulligans. So th this matchup is going to be a really weird one because um, Bello Betty, of course, is a, a really, really fast deck. Um, and, like, it, it's either you lose fast or you win fast. And, like, I get really aggressive, but I can't get as aggressive with Bello Betty um, because if I start swinging a lot into life, then they're just going to get a lot of triggers off me. Um, so we decided to play the Baby 5. Uh, knowing that it's going to be a slower game. So we're definitely going to use the Baby 5 next turn. Um, yeah, because I, I, I don't want to go fast versus this deck. So I'm, ju I'm just going to try to play a real actual deck this time. Um, so you go Stage, Discard, a Fire Fist, Search Top 3... So, trash. No. Okay, yeah, they go to the bottom deck. Um, yeah, so he, he's he's having a little bit of trouble because he plays curl every single week. Um, so, this, this is first time playing something different in a while. So, he goes stage again, discards another Fire Fist. Um, and I think he gets the Ivankov there, and he just passes. Yeah, so we're saying, yeah, when Bello Betty goes stage and then activates another stage, their, their hand is pretty bad. Um... So here, I already know he's got kind of a bad hand. So I'm like, I don't really want to swing twice and give him like trigger bodies. Uh, so we're going to go baby five here. And I think we just grab a 2k here or we grab the zero cost event. Um, 
just kind of trying to ca get as much counter in hand as we can. Because if we can survive, like, the turn where Bello Betty throws the Hail Mary, um, then I think we win. Because they just burn their resources out uh, when they go for game. So he doesn't get a trigger, and then we just drop another baby five. Uh, like I said, we don't want to swing twice into this deck, so we're just trying to get as much counter as possible and uh, hoping that he attacks into the baby fives as well because um, we don't want to take life uh, early on in the game because then if he does do the big push, then we're just getting cooked. Um, so he draws. He's at four dawn now. Um, he's going to go stage. Discards the third fire fist now. So now I feel a little bit safe playing my blockers too. Because um, I know they won't get fire fisted away. So he grabs the rusher. And I know he has a bonkov. So, I think he's going 5 life. And I do take it here. Uh, just to kind of get another card so I can play some bodies. And he plays the Bello Betty Searcher. Grabs another Rusher. So, yeah, he's just prepping... Prepping for the turn where he can just make the big push. And we're at 5 Dawn. Um, and I actually get to play my favorite card here. Uh, so we're going to go 5 first. Or do we go 5? Okay, no, we just dropped the Yamato and pass. Um, ho really hoping this Yamato sticks. Uh, cause Yamato can put a lot of pressure if she's able to get a swing in, especially versus a deck that doesn't normally play any blockers. Um, they just always have to counter out of it. So if you make it really big, you can almost make them use their entire hand cause taking two life and it being banished on top of that puts you so far behind. Especially like right now he's at 3 life. If I can get him down to 1 life. And he doesn't even get any triggers off the other 2. Then like we're in a really really good spot. So he yeah he sees the writing on the wall here. I think he's going to try to push something. Because he drops the rusher. Uh, he uses stage. Discards another rusher. Uh, I'm not sure what he added there. I don't really remember. He he showed it to me, but it wasn't on, um, like on camera. I think that was the 2K counter revolutionary army girl. Uh, we take that five off the leader. And he actually passes here, which is, like, really weird. Um, but I guess that's kind of, like, showing that he might have the counter event. So, yeah. I think here I'm just going to force everything he has in hand with this Yamato. And, like, especially knowing that if if I can force everything he has with the Yamato and I can use my hand to protect it, then the, the next Yamato swing is going to hit for sure. Yeah, so we just, we go 12 at life. And, I mean, he, he doesn't really have an option here. He has to counter out of it. We 
Let's see what he does. Okay, so he does go up, counter, and he keeps two cards in hand. Um, so I don't even think I want to swing the leader. Okay, I do swing leader just to get that free one. Um, yeah. So, we just pass here. And I think now he, like, he sees if he goes for my Yamato and I defend it, then he loses next turn because he took that life. And he's so low with cards in hand. Um, so he's going to try to make the big push on me. Uh, especially now that he has four swings and I'm at three life. Yeah, so right now we're just, we're kind of talking, um, because he thinks he's dead next turn if he doesn't kill me here, uh, because he's saying if he, if he swings into my Yamato, um, he doesn't have game and I still just, like, have control over him, um, just because he's so low in hand, uh, so he's going to drop that, he's going to minus my leader, I believe. Or does he? He's counting Don here. So he has four swings. Okay, so he minus the Yamato. He's going eight into my 4K Yamato. And I think think I just let that go because I have another one in hand and like I could just try to clear his board as well and he used a lot of resources here to uh, do something so I give him two two K's on the first eight that goes to life um, I take the second one and then he swings nine at lead um, yep, there goes nine and ten. I get rid of the Yamato, uh, because that's not going to hit the board. It feels bad getting rid of the Ezo, too, but it is what it is. So, here, I don't have a game anymore, so I have to push board. Um, so I, unfortunately, I also have to deal with the 2k attack, uh, Bello Betty searcher just because with his leader ability, it can go to five, which is like really annoying. So I think this turn, I also put a Dawn under a baby five in swing. Um, I do that first, just to, to I mean you never know if he's gonna counter or not to save that but yeah we just put two into it and I think he just lets that go yep that's gone and then I think I put seven into Ivankov yep Seven into the Ivankov. And then I have another swing that I can go into the three drop. So we're going to search off baby five first just to see if we use that three down or not. Okay, so we get a blocker off that, which is not bad at all. Um, and then, yeah, now that I have a two drop blocker. I think I use the leader ability just to be able to swing again and get rid of another body. 
Okay, no. I go add baby five, which gives me another counter. And then I drop that. Okay. Yep, yep. So that's pretty good here. Uh, he's got two in hand. Uh, I have two life and two blockers. So, yeah, I think there, there's just no way out for him anymore. Uh, yeah, once Bello Betty does that push uh, that they do, it's it's really hard to come back from it if the opponent survives. Because you, you put so much into that and, like, your bodies are so vulnerable after. So, like, your board becomes really small like it is, like, right now. Even though they still have, like, a decent amount of stuff. Um, he's going to use the HQ and <laughs> trash in the bunk up just to add another one. Yeah, it'd be like that sometimes. Indeed. So he drops another rusher. Yep, I think he's going to just do whatever he can again and try to clear, clear my blockers. Um, so I think I just take... Okay. Yep, so he switches. He's going to go Karasu first just so he can bring my leader down. Um... And yeah, so that's seven, seven until my four, or no, okay, he did use Bello Betty, actually, so that's nine right now, yeah, nine into that, and then I hit the Punk Gibson, so I rest the Rusher, um, I let him take the Dawn off, cause, I, technically, you don't put Dawn on the characters before you swing them just in case something like that happens um so i let him take it back just so he can make the correct play um and then he swings another nine i give him the blocker um and then he swings this is the last thing he can do um so we just counter out of it just so we can keep another life just in case we can't end him um, he has no cards in hand. And, like, it's so awkward versus the yellow decks. Because if they, if they have the beige, then I, I don't win. But at least, luckily, he, he got rid of some beiges earlier. So, let's see here. I think I go... Because I can put four under baby five, one on the law, and then the rest on the kid. And that that's enough to push game unless he has beige. So, okay, so I do play it safe since he has no cards in hand. Yeah, we're not we're not gonna do the thing where we push for game. So we go five, we go six there. Um, and then we stay with one life. And we play another blocker. Okay, so we have enough to survive here. Um, here we go. Stage ability. Just to kind of see something. But. Okay, so he goes Kirisu. He's probably just going to drop it. And hit the. Um. The kid for minus. Yep. He makes kid seven. And then. Yeah he goes seven into the kid. 
I think I just give him the blocker here. And then he goes 8 into my 7. Luckily, I had the 2K here. Uh, he's still at 2 life, but I think now I can safely go for game. Yeah, so I do the 4 on baby 5. He does not hit a trigger. So now we use leader. And yeah. At this point, it doesn't matter what trigger he hits. Uh, we go nine and that's game right there. And I have a quick little bonus match. Uh, we did the salty run back. Uh, Cause Jonah wanted his redemption here, so he he whipped out his Kuro deck. Uh, like I say, he's the he's the resident Kuro player. He's won like three locals already in OP five, um, and like like I was saying too, everybody at locals uh, is pretty competitive, and like we have a lot of really good players. So um, for him to win with Kuro, he's he's really good um, at the game and really good with Kuro. Uh, so you know he had a bust of Kuro out. He's like. Well, you can't beat me with Kuro. <laughs> so, so let's see. Let's see here. The green mirror match. Um, and, yep, he goes uh, Nami, search, pass. And I think I just go 5-5 five, five at him. So, yep, we're going to go swing 5. And uh, see what he does here. Um, depending on what he does here, I could baby five. Um, but I decided to just go five again. And yeah, put him down to three. He gets no triggers. Uh, Kuro plays a lot of triggers, so I got really lucky right here. Um, just just trying to put that pressure on Kuro uh cuz Kuro will you know spiral and just out of nowhere hit you with like five swings so i want to get him low fast just to make him feel uncomfortable using a lot of dawn um and i also know his deck doesn't really play a lot of blockers uh so he swung seven i take he has two Dawn up, so it's probably a Punk Gibson. Um, I'm at five Dawn here. Um, I'm just grabbing some packs from the tournament. Um, and then let's see. We're going to use, yep, we're going to use Baby Five. Probably trying to dig for some counter. Um, yep. And we grab a 2K. Alright, grabbing some more packs real quick. Um, let's see. I'm at 4, Dawn. Um, we're just going to go 7. I'm um, going 7 just because I, I want him to use the Punk Gibson. Um, and if he doesn't, he has to give me two cards because I know he's not going to want to go down to two versus kid. Um, so he's swinging two into baby five. Um, so that's, that's going to be gone. Uh, okay. I didn't see that he swung that because I was grabbing those tournament packs. Um. Yep, they're just uh, handing them out still. Alright, so, yep, I let the baby five go. Uh, I've got the two Don. He's going five lead, I believe. Yep, so I give him a Yamato. No, and I'm probably not going to get the chance to drop it. Um, even though I would really love to drop a Yamato here, 
because Yamato will force cards out of hand um, like 90% of the time here because Kuro, like I said, they, they play a lot of triggers, so they're not going to want to get hit with Banish. Um, okay, so I go 7 lead. Uh, that means I can go 7 twice. Yep. He did not hit a trigger again. I think he's going to counter out of that. He gives me three 1Ks, which feels really good. Um, and then I still have a Punk Gibson. So, here he's separating his Dawn up here. Uh, there's a couple of things he could do. Okay, so he goes 8 lead. I'm I'm going to take that one. Um, even though I probably should have just used the Punk Gibson there. And rested the Nami. Because um, now, yeah, he's able to just swing 8 again. And now I have to counter. Um, where if I would have just Punk Gibson there, I would have gone up to 9 guarded from that curl swing and I would not take the second one because he can't rest the Nami um, and then I took the leader curl swing and he drops the two bodies here um, and now this is where like he's just got so much pressure on me here I, I don't have many options like especially like since I haven't been able to put a body on board either so all I have is just the two swings from the leader. And I, I I don't think I can go big enough to get rid of the curl unless I put all my dawn on it. In which case I just I'll probably lose even faster. So I'm gonna swing five on Nami. I'm just looking to remove some cards here. I'm gonna use the effect restand. Um, then we're going to rest the sham and swing eight into it just cause that's three cards. If he wants to protect it. Um, and I think I have another punk Gibson or no, I have the same punk, punk Gibson that I didn't use. Um, so I'm just waiting for a good chance to use it here, but he is a green player. So he has the read. So he's already 10 steps ahead of me. So let's see here. He's just separating his Dawn. Uh, probably trying to see how he can do it where he can restand his leader. Uh, so he goes 5-5. Five, five. I got to counter out of those. Or else like he's going to force the big swing if I take those little ones. Um, and then he stands the crow and swings 13 again. Which is just super unfortunate. Yeah, so I, I think right here there's not really anything I can do. That's that's just game right there. Yeah, being able for for him to restand that uh eight cost Kuro and swinging thirteen twice was just devastating for me so i'm gonna swing five into his four drop uh just try to get a card out of hand because i'm gonna dofi him um unfortunately i'm at zero life uh so that means if he wants to just go five django uh he can swing 10 use up probably my entire hand and if he's able to restand the Django, he just wins here, which he is going to be able to do here. Um, I'm thinking if I'm going to counter here, which unfortunately I don't have the counter, but I'm going to show him that I can get up to nine. Um, so, yeah, Jonah just giving me a master class with green here. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Leave a like, comment, sub, and I'll see you guys on the next one.